Good morning. Thank you for joining SmartXPD today for a presentation on a new technological advance in gait analysis that can help people with Parkinson's walk better. Today, we will be hearing from representatives from the company Magnus on their new product, New Shoe. I'm Patrick Lasasso, president of SmartXPD and coordinator of our Parkinson's Life discussion group. And as you can hear, I'm struggling with a little bit of a voice issue this today, but we'll get through it. Uh, this is a place where we come together to unite, strengthen, and share. If you enjoy Smart XPD, please consider making a contribution. You can find a thanks button to do so on the YouTube channel banner, or there are payment options in your email notifications. We are recording today's presentation, so if you don't want to be seen, please turn off your video and make sure your microphone is muted so that we have a nice, quiet room. But make sure you know how to unmute yourself if you have a question towards the end. You can also enter questions into the chat as we go, and I'll read them at the appropriate time. We'll email you a link once this presentation is posted to the Smart XPD YouTube channel so that you can share it with your friends and groups. If you'd like more info about today's presentation, you'll find our speaker's contact information in the description section of the YouTube video once it's posted, and I'll ask them also to post their information in the YouTube chat now. So today we're so fortunate to have Olga Ergenemann and Chinook Van Negen from Magnus, who will be presenting New Shoe, a medical device that enables patients to collect data on their gait and share this data with healthcare professionals. The New Shoe can also provide vibrotactile feedback to assist patients while walking. Please give a warm Smart XPD welcome to Olga and Chinook. Thanks, Patrick, for the uh, introduction and uh, nice to meet you all here. We will talk a little bit about our solution today, but we will talk about also gate and gate analysis a little bit. And we will start with um, a little bit basics. Uh, we can go to the next slide. Um, I mean, as I think you all know, um, I mean, human gate we will be talking about today is a person's way of walking, and it's usually an indicator of our health. And uh, we uh, learn walking as a baby and during our childhood, our uh, gait changes. So we really learn how to walk in our adulthood. Uh, we optimize uh, our gait so it comes to a different level, but it keeps evolving. And uh, in the elderly years, unfortunately, uh, the gait starts to deteriorate. Uh, and this usually starts with um, decreased muscle strength then it can be due to reduced energy efficiency and later on uh, it can be related to declined sensory systems uh, we can go to the next slide uh, if we look at today uh, the population uh, unfortunately a lot of people live with some kind of gait uh, problem uh, i mean people between the ages 60 and 69 over uh, like around 11 percent of them have some kind of a gait issue if we look at ages 7 to 79, uh, the, the rate increases to 37%. But um, if you look at like 80 years and older, then more than 60% of people have kind of, uh, some kind of a gait uh, problem. Uh, unfortunately, also it's affecting over 60% of uh, patients of neurological disorders. And if we look more into Parkinson's disease, especially at the later stages of the disease, the rate goes up to 90 over 90 percent uh, on the right you see actually some uh, typical gait disorders due to neurological conditions uh, yeah i don't want to go over them uh, all uh, but just to give you some idea we can i think move to the next um, slide so um how do we analyze gait or what are we kind of looking at in terms of gait parameters uh, here you see actually a illustration of different um let's say cycles of the gate. Uh, I think the important, I, I don't want to go very technical today, but uh, the interesting thing is if we can uh, very uh, precisely detect uh, four of the gate events, we can calculate uh, most of these gate parameters. And these uh, gate events I'm referring to are the heel strike, flat foot, heel off, and the toe off. So if we detect them accurately, um, how they happen and when they happen, we can calculate most of the uh, gate parameters. And why are they important? Uh, I will give also some examples here. We will not go, I think, very deep into all the details, but uh, let's look into, for example, stride length. 
we know that our stride length tends to decrease with aging. There is also many studies showing that um, Parkinson's disease also with Parkinson's disease, the stride length starts to uh, shorter. If we look at another parameter, minimum toe clearance, it is related to risk of tripping. Uh, the variability of gait parameters, they are also uh, related to aging. They are related to our risk of falling. But th th there is also evidence that uh, the, the variabilities of gait parameters are related to Parkinson's disease or Alzheimer's disease. Uh, or uh, another example is symmetry. We know that uh, stroke survivors have symmetry problems. We can go to the next slide. Um, there are about 40 parameters uh, that are of interest to us uh, in terms of gait parameters, uh, which are, let's say, uh, giving information about our health. Uh, in this actually um, diagram, you see uh, some of these parameters. Uh, again, I don't want to go over all of them. They, they can be really st stride specific, for example, uh, the, the stride length, velocity, uh, some angle supination, angle lateral swing. Uh, but we also look at uh, general parameters like, okay, uh, how many steps we make, what is the distance we travel, what's our cadence, what's our gait speed or the walk ratio. Um, and we as a company uh, developed a solution to analyze these parameters, to monitor these parameters and uh, somehow relate these parameters to our health. I will hand over to Shinuk, so she will uh, go over our uh, solution in the next slides. Yes, so thank you, Ogot. So as Ogot just mentioned, so your, your gait pattern can have really a big influence on the quality of your life. And there are a lot of parameters involved as were shown on the slide before. So to get a better insight into your walking, you need to measure it. And this can be done with your AI-powered Nushu X smart shoe. So Nushu X can measure all these parameters we just mentioned and can help monitor and track your progress. So you can collect data about your daily life activities uh, and this can give you information and give you better insights into your well-being. So Nushu X is also used by clinicians and they also they use the shoe to measure their patients and to evaluate if, for example, medication or treat, yeah, a treatment has a desired effect. Besides these gait parameters, the shoe can also give vibrations. So we cannot only measure your gait pattern, but we can also provide vibrations. And these can help, for example, to avoid freezing of gait uh, with Parkinson patients. So freezing of gait has a big impact uh, on the life of a Parkinson patient, and a lot of you probably have experienced it. And there are several strategies uh, that can help to avoid to overcome freezing of gait. And some common strategies uh, make use of cues. So maybe some of you are already aware of cues, uh, for others it's something new. So a cue is a stimulus that facilitates the initiation or the maintaining of a motor activity like walking. And there are different kinds of cues. So we have a visual uh, cue, like a stripe, like a laser on the ground or a pylon, and you have to step over it. So it's really like you look at the stimuli uh, and you act on it. Then we have an auditorial stimuli. Uh, so you can think of a beep like a metronome. So every time on the beep or on the rhythm, you make a step. And we have the somatosensory stimuli. And uh, this can be a tap on your leg. And every time you tap, you walk. Or this can be a vibration. And that's what we are using with our new shoe. So, how does it work? Our new shoe looks like a normal sneaker, but it's actually a high-end innovative smart shoe. So you see the sole, the white part of the shoe. We have embedded multiple sensors and even a small computer in it. And with this, we can run AI algorithms, which can provide your personalized queuing based on your walking. So this means that we can detect every step you're making. Um, and as you see in the video, every time you make a step, 
it detects it and it can give a vibration at the right moment based on your gait. So in real time, we measure every step you're making. So if you walk faster or you walk slower, the vibration will adapt to your walking speed. And this is different than the other cues. Like for example, with the metronome we mentioned before, you step on the rhythm of the metronome and you have to adapt. But also if the metronome goes, it doesn't stop. So if you stop for a traffic light when you're outside, the metronome will keep going, where with the new shoe, it stops because it's based on your gait event. So on your walking and it will measure when you're stopping and the vibration will start when you make a step again. So let's have a look at a patient example. I see the video is not going. Here we go. Yeah. So here we see a patient. He's walking already with the Nushu X shoes, but the vibration is off. So he just has to make an eight around the chairs. And we're just measuring how he's walking. And he's experienced a lot of freezing. So every time he starts, but he freezes again, as you can see on the video. So we'll see here, he will start again, gets up to speed, but freezes again, which also is a higher risk of falling. And now we're gonna turn on the vibration. So now every time he makes a step, the shoe vibrates and you will see a, an immediately effect. So he can walk smooth with the vibrations. So with the cues, he can avoid freezing of gait. So let's go to another example. So here we see a little bit of a younger Parkinson patient. This is Matt, he's also still working. Um, again, he's first walking with the shoes without the vibration where we just measuring his gait. And for Matt, it was really like at work, he couldn't get his own coffee because he was out of balance. Um, he had to use his stick and he had a lot of freezing. So every time he got stuck. So now when we turn on the vibration, you can see he can walk without the stick and he doesn't have the freezing anymore. And this allows him to just get his own coffee at work instead of asking his colleague every time. And these small things can make already a huge impact on someone's daily life. When you see, he's also smiling because he's happy that he can walk again. So how can Nushu help you? So it can help with the vibrational feedback. So it can firm your steps and can assist you so you can walk with confidence, but you can also use the Nushu to exercise because the vibrations can help you and you can interact to get real-time feedback from your shoes. You can track your daily progress with Nushu and really monitor how much you walk and how you walk. And you can also share your data with your loved ones. So one last example. Here we see Emma, um, also diagnosed with Parkinson at a really young age. She had a DBS uh, operation, but this only helped for the tremor, but not for the walking. So she really had difficulties still with the walking. And with Nushu, she could walk much more smooth. And that also helped that she could walk longer because she got less tired. And even this allowed her to walk last year, a Nordic walking event where she did four 
0.7 kilometers. I'm not sure out of my head how much miles that is. Uh, I think around three. Um, so, but this was a huge achievement for her uh, as with the shoes, she can kind of live a normal life again. So if you would like to try out the shoes, um, we have at the moment two test centers in California. One uh, is Move Up Health and Fitness in Fresno and Sacramento. Uh, and one is Renew Health, which is in San Diego and the Orange County region. But we are also coming to LA uh, next week. So we will be at the LA Marathon Expo and the LA Marathon Charity Big 5K event. Uh, we will be at the booth with PC LA. So yeah, come and visit us, uh, try out the shoes. If you have issues with walking, freezing of gait, um, this is your chance. Um, so we hope to see you there and we're happy to answer any questions. This was uh, amazing, very encouraging. Um, so our community here is pretty good with the mute and unmute. So I'm going to go ahead and toss it out. We don't have any chat questions. Um, so we've got people from pretty much all over the world here. Um, do you have an email list? That they could sign up on uh to know when be notified when they're in your area here's contact in there for chat great okay yeah i mean if uh, they are based in europe they can contact us i think uh, we will launch it in uh, uk but the rest of europe is kind of they can actually uh, order uh, shoes uh, right now uh, yeah, US is also yeah becoming like now slowly available. We have these test centers. Uh, I mean, we really uh, encourage people to test it. Uh, so that's also why we are trying to partner with physical therapy clinics. Uh, I think it's kind of much easier for uh, patients to kind of uh, get the feeling. I mean, we we have really good results with a lot of patients, but of course it doesn't work with everyone. And the best way to find out is just to try it. Uh, but yeah, if you're there in US or Europe, I think yeah, that's going to be available in other regions. Yeah, they can contact us. We can uh, put them in our lists. Yes, uh, and we will announce on the website uh, where we're going to be. So I think at the end of this week, um, you can find on the website also the events where people can try out the shoes in the coming uh, months. So yeah, please keep a look out on the website. Uh, we will update it every time. If there's a new event where you can try out the shoes or if there's a new test center. And so I see you've got the QR code here. If everybody points their phone at the screen, although some of you might be watching on your phones, it, it takes you to their website, um, which you can also reach um, at uh, magnus.ch. Um, so the the individuals in the video that have it do they currently have are there are, are they using those daily the shoes yes, daily they are. yeah they're using the shoes daily <laughs> and is there does the um is is there adequate sustainability in terms of the effects does do they get used to it and then it stops working a little less or um does it continue to be as effective as it was on the first day i think it's, it's a really good, good question. question yeah <laughs> Sorry, Shino. It's uh, I mean this is a little bit like we we, we are working on this to understand more. Uh, I mean it's a relatively new product, so the oldest let's say the uh, uh, patients who have been using this for the longest time is now a little bit more than a year, and we talk to them regularly and we know that they are still using it. Right. Uh, so yes, with some people it, it was kind of um, continuing and most of the people I think in the last six months we had many more patients using it and they, they are I think uh, we didn't hear anyone after a month they uh, didn't come and say oh it doesn't work anymore. I mean of course some people it's a neurodegenerative disease so the conditions change so some people might not maybe uh, get the benefit after some time so this is also something we are expecting. And we are also doing some studies on that. But uh, right now, yeah, we have, let's say, good, uh, uh, let's say, evidence that it's something that uh, doesn't disappear after a few weeks or months. So it's uh, pronounced, but it really depends on the person. I think it's 
how the disease is progressing. But uh, yeah, we, we are also collecting more evidence to have actually a uh, better understanding in, on what's going on. Okay. Um, let's see, Chanel, do you want to, should we put this back to gallery view? So yes, uh, we can all come yeah. back together and we can see everybody's screen there. That's great. Um, well, first of all, let's uh, give them a round of applause for their creativity and taking the time for sharing this uh, mir miracle uh, with us. And it's an example of um, the encouragement that uh, I think we all need to embrace and that we've got creative people uh, like Chinook and Olgek that uh, are, you know, actively finding new ways of making things better. You know, it's not a cure. We can't sit around waiting for the cure, but we can optimize our quality of life to, by finding ways like this to to live better and be healthier. Um, Victor came in late. Victor, I'm going to nickname you Tardy. Uh, just kidding. Uh, where's his chat? He had an interesting question. Um, uh, how how the oh, how is the okay? So this is good. How is the vibration activated? And I think. Oh, can I? And we I met with them and I tried these shoes on uh myself and and felt uh them at work and it was it was really great. Uh so um, yeah, so like the, it's activated. You can also use an app so where you can turn it on or off if you want. Uh, or if you don't use the app, it's just when you put the shoes on and start walking, it's it gets activated. So if you sit down. There's no vibration, but the moment you start walking, the vibration uh, kicks in. So, and and, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to add also the uh, moment the vibration happens is also a little bit like how I showed on the slide. So we detect these gate events, and it's really happening at the right moment. So I think that's a little bit uh, the important thing. It's not just like a, a periodic thing that uh, no matter what you do continues. It's not working like that. We really analyze every step you make and then trigger this vibration at the right moment so that's a little bit like the know-how of the company what makes our solution unique so if you stop walking then yeah it doesn't vibrate if you start uh, walking then it just comes at the right moment and we have a, several different modes so typically patients try and uh, figure out themselves kind of which mode works best for them and it's something usually fast so after you make 10, 20 steps, you really see, okay, this is helping me. It's kind of good. I like it. Or, uh, yeah, of course, some people don't also respond. So it's not for uh, working, as you see in the videos, for everyone. But just wanted to add that kind of other than the turn on and off. It's also how uh, the whole mechanism works. I think it's important. Yeah. And uh, as I recall, I mean, you know, we think about, we take walking for granted. <clears throat> and we don't realize the mechanics, how sophisticated the mechanics of gate really are. Uh, dorsiflexion, you know, toe lift, which you would reference easier uh, earlier, stride length, um, heel strike, all these. As, as I recall, um, the different modes that you provided kind of provide a consistent cue at, di at various parts of the gait stride so the user could then find out what actually helps them. Is that correct? Yes. I mean, one example is a swing phase. So we detect your swing phase. So as long as you're moving, the shoes vibrate. So if you do little steps, then it will vibrate very short. If you do like a longer step, a longer swing phase, then it will vibrate during the whole swing phase. So it will be a longer vibration. This is one mode, but there are others. And I think the best way to figure out yeah, what works for you is to try them. Right. And I wonder if there's any type of adaptation that the person does get used to if they switched modes, I wonder if that would kind of clear uh, and, and give them a sort of a reset. If well, I guess you already said that they don't; it, it continues to work. So, um, uh, so Anne asks, are they able to get wet? Uh, how are they on different surfaces, and what is the project, projected life of the shoes? <laughs> I mean, like you you can walk in a bit of rain, but definitely don't walk through through big big like how you say it like a kennel or like a pool of water. Um, there are a lot of electronica in the shoe. Um, so yeah, if it's a little bit of drizzling, you can definitely walk outside. Also on different surfaces, they have a, a good grip on the sole. Um, they're robust, so you can walk on different surfaces uh, if you want. And um, the projected 
like the shoe, it's also, it really depends on how much you walk with the shoe, I would say. Uh, if you walk every day outside, uh, it will be shorter than if you only use them inside the house. Uh, but we have options as well that for a reduced price, uh, they can be replaced uh, after two years. So you can, mm. you can find that also on the website. Um, are there any, like, can the shoe be rebuilt to a certain extent or do you got to get a whole new shoe each time? I mean, the, the idea is that you send us the old shoes, then we recycle the electronics and then we use the electronics for our clinical development or like clinical studies. So they are, let's say, recycled. So we don't want to create a lot of waste. Uh, I mean, the shoe kind of becomes useless, but the electronic, we recover it for further, uh, you know, research development or clinical uh, studies. Uh, so you receive a new shoe. Yeah. We've had a yeah. couple of questions yeah. about the cost of the shoe. What is the U.S. Uh, dollar cost of a, a pair of those shoes? I guess I would imagine it includes the with the software, with the phone and everything. Yeah, so they started 12 195 um that's without the app and for 100 more you have them with the app um yes that's okay uh and you know i i i'm just gonna not that i have any interest in i want you guys to succeed i have no interest in this but it seems to me if you if, if you're in danger of falling and this is something that could prevent it it seems pretty well worth the cost um so if uh sharon asks i think if she had a desire to increase her stride length, would this have some sort of strategy to employ to help increase the stride length? And what would it be like? Yes, it can. So what, what we sometimes now say also to patients, um, it's like try to let the shoe vibrate as long as possible. And to do that, you are increasing your stride length. What we also see is that the vibration helps patients. So especially with Parkinson patients, a lot of times we see more the, the shuffling of gait. So they make smaller steps. And when we turn the vibration on, they are making bigger steps um, with the shoe. What If someone does have that fascinating gait, um, the quick, quick, quick steps, what is the setting? Like what? what is the stimulus that uh, reduces that what happens what is the cadence is it just a, a rhythm that they respond to I think like, we, yeah. Yeah. The, the, we have a mode for uh, which starts kind of this vibration at the um, heel off which might be good because you might still do a little bit this uh, motion and then if it comes there it might help you to maybe initiate the proper step so that is something i would recommend them to try or the swing phase can be also interesting because again uh, the, this fascinating gait it's usually you don't have a, a good swing phase that might also help but um i think yeah it everyone responds a bit uh, differently uh, so those two would be the i think first ones i would try actually in that case uh, i don't know if you if you have something to add yes I, I think these are two you can always try out and even you can use if you want a metronome where you have to step on the rhythm and uh, sometimes then you can make bigger steps uh, but what we most of the time see is that the swing vibration or the heel of uh, help uh, the patient to kind of automatically make bigger steps when it's on so I, I imagine we all even though we haven't had vibration on our feet we can probably imagine what that's like can you describe what what the event of a heel off is so we can in our mind's eye picture what does that mean when the heel strikes and the toe lifts and the heel comes off the foot or what, what is that phase? Yes. So it's like when you put your foot on the ground uh, and you put your heel up. So you are going to start the, to the swing. So the moment that you yeah, start the initiation of okay. a new gait cycle. So you put your heel up, then you get the vibration. So also when people have the starting, they have issues with start walking. And um, then when they lift a little bit the heel, the vibration kicks in and they get like the, the stimulus to make the step. Does the vibration occur across the full foot or does it have different um, areas? It's it's under the heel. 
but some people feel it in their whole foot, uh, but the vibration device is more based under the heel. On the heel, okay. Yeah. Uh, does the shoe help with feet getting tangled, causing falls? That's a very uh, big question. <laughs> Um, I mean, uh, and the question, um, help with, does it help with feet getting tangled? I, I don't know what tangled means. Maybe just maybe discombobulated or tripping uh, over your feet. Say again, tripping over your feet, tripping over your feet. That was, that, that would be tangled. A rhythm. It's establishing a rhythm. So it should actually help that condition yeah i would i would but yeah i think we cannot really say it helps with that condition it's a little bit you know we just you can try the mode and that maybe stimulation at the exact moment it can help uh one individual we can see that it might not work with another one so you know we cannot really claim that this is really avoiding a certain uh problem but it's more like, yeah, you're getting a bit support and it's all a personal experience. So yes, it may work. It can really make a difference for an individual, but yeah, it might also not really help you. Um, yeah, I think it might be still worth a try. You know, in this space, I've been doing this for 20 years and I've seen a lot of products come in and a lot of uh, over the moon promises. And I, I do really appreciate how, you know, careful you guys are about making claims and qualifying what can help and what, you know, may help or what may not help. Just, uh, you know, it's, it's refreshing because I've seen a lot go the other way. Um, there are several more questions in the chat. Yeah. Let me, I'm trying to, okay. As a new product, do you really know what life of the shoe is? So I mean, we expect it to be kind of good for two years, like what's the lifetime? I mean, the electronics and everything should work like without any problem uh, for two years. So if something, you know, the electronics stops working, there will be a guarantee so it can be replaced. But we are talking about a variable device, so it's a bit like subject to usage, right? So if it's yeah. kind of used in a uh, really uh, out of the, let's say, um, expected uh, usage scenario, then yeah, it's difficult to say as it's a shoe. But uh, let's say our electronics should be stable and there should be no problem with the battery and everything working for two years. But there is also like a special package. To, so for the uh, this worn out uh, devices, you can get a little bit like a care package so you can have an easy way to replace it. Uh, so that's uh, we know that this is really important and this is somehow changing, let's say, the life quality of people. So it's not like uh, we really uh, understand that this is something important and we try to help them. Uh, and I mean, also um, coming back to your comment, uh, I mean, of course, we want to help everyone. This is really nice. We, we wish we can say that, oh, this is kind of the solution for everything. But unfortunately, yeah, I mean, some people don't respond. So it's uh, very personal. Yeah. And Parkinson's is especially like a very, I mean, it's a, a sophisticated disease. So it's difficult to understand. And I think it's changing really a lot from person to person. Uh, that's why we also encourage people to test it before buying it. Then we don't really uh, disappoint or create a lot of hopes and then it might work or it might not work. Uh, so I think the best way is kind of, yeah, uh, that's exactly why we want to partner with clinics so they have the shoes so people can test it. I think there was also one question a little bit earlier on the, um, uh, I think they're asking from Virginia, I think when it's available. Yeah. So, yeah, we start a bit in California and in the West Coast, but I think in a couple of months, we will have also some partners in the East Coast. I think most probably in New York, Boston area, and then perhaps in Florida. So it will take a couple of more months. And then after that, we will also go to other states uh, step by step. Um, yeah, and we will also a little bit discuss more of if people live further away, can we find a way that they can still order it and return it if it doesn't work? So we will check it. But Right now, we have a lot of demand uh, and we are a bit like uh, just starting. So it's not logistically possible, but we will come there like in the next months. Uh, so we're working hard to do that. But yeah, it's also a very important step. So we are a company from uh, Switzerland. It's a big step for us to launch this in the US and it's going very well. Uh, we are excited to also be there next week. Uh, but yeah, a little bit like we have to focus on some things. But if you're a little bit patient, it will become available also in other places soon. 
how um complicated is, is like the onboarding with something like this in other words if someone ordered the shoe they would get a package with the shoe and they would get a code or whatever i don't know how you do it, to download the application so there's an individual user they've got the product is this something that someone can is going to need some like assistance to get it up and running with or is it kind of it comes to, in the package if you order it with the app you get a little manual uh, it tells you step by step how to download the app with the QR code, how to create the account, uh, and then exactly what you have to do. Um, so until now, everybody with the manual could do it themselves. Uh, but always, like if you have any questions, uh, you can contact us um, and we can help you. But yeah, it, it we have made the app user friendly, so um, it should be possible for everyone to install it uh, and connect it to the shoes and start working with it. So um, Jordan uh, asks, can insurance cover the cost? I, it's definitely something we're gonna look into and wanna talk to insurance companies um, in this year. But at the moment, so I'm not aware of that the insurance uh, okay. will cover the cost. I also saw a question about, or Orthotics. So if you have an orthosis, like an Evo, um, you, you can use the shoe still. Sometimes you just need one size bigger, so it fits in, uh, but you will still feel the vibration uh, when you are- Through the orthotic. Yes, sometimes okay. even better because it's, it's stiff. So it kind of, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. The vibration. You know, I'm thinking about the community we have here, and I know that a, a bunch of people would like to try it. I wonder if there would ever be a way for you to do a um, uh, ship out a, a trial set that has a return package, and they have it for a week or three days once they receive it, and they have all the returns. So they, they don't keep this shoe. They see if it works, and then they send it back to you. And if they don't send it back, they get charged. I wonder if there would be a way to do that or whether that would cause some sort of issues with people using the same shoe. I mean, people use the same ski boots. I just came back from skiing and I returned them. Um, but I, I mean, I, I would love to see you guys, you know, accelerate your exposure to the community. Yeah, I mean, hopefully we'll have a lot of places that you can test it. So that will be actually in the beginning, the model will be like that. So in each county, I think in California first, and then later in other states, we want to have some physical therapist kind of partner who can do this. But I think what you're saying is also, we are thinking about it. I think it's not going to be available immediately, but we will also consider this on the uh, long term. Uh, yeah, yeah you, you can follow us. I think we will uh, announce if there's such uh, things, but uh, yeah, the, the priority will be just to have the partners. So it's also, I think, nice, uh, a bit better experience if you have the physical therapist, they can check, they can a little bit guide you over the different modes. Uh, so you can really go with the whole thing. Uh, so that's a little bit like uh, what we prefer uh, or how we will start, but uh, we'll look into also this shipping options later on. Okay. Uh, Carol says, do you, have, do you send out newsletters? We have an option to sign up for the newsletter, and um, yeah. I'm going to post it back. We again. should out. Uh, we should send out it uh, soon. I think it, it's planned for to send one out soon. Um, also, okay. California is always the first. <laughs> More like so, yeah, so also, we will be in other places in California. Uh, also, we will visit Arizona and Las Vegas in, in March. So it should be online by Friday, where we will be in the coming two weeks. And so if you are not in LA, but in some other area um, in California, Arizona, or around Las Vegas, yeah, keep an eye I on the I think we website. have also a confirmed trip to Seattle in May. And I think we will come to also the East Coast somewhere early summer. And when you go to these places, you do you send out to your email list that we're going to be there regardless? Do you, do you guys do an overall blast, or do people need to go and watch your calendar? I mean, if you follow us on social media, you can also uh, yeah, get notified, like Instagram, Facebook, uh, these kind of social media. You can also do that. But, of course, you can also check from our website or, um, yeah, um, 
just uh, I think uh, if you're really interested, also shoot us an email, then we will at least make sure that yeah you're uh, informed when we are in your region, or if there's like any activity there, like with some through some partners. Uh, yeah. I think it's it's a good idea to also send out a newsletter. So we will definitely keep that in mind to maybe start doing. Yeah, uh, how viral have those YouTube are those videos up on YouTube? Have you guys got a lot of views? Or I know some has uh, have a lot of views. Uh, yeah. I mean, these types of things. I've noticed that whenever I do a video on blocking or gate, it gets um, a lot more views immediately. People are really interested in that whole phase um so do i think this is cindy asks have you considered shark tank for more exposure what do you mean cindy this isn't enough <laughs> uh no, that's that's good, okay. but, but you know shark tank can give them money too and help them you know be more exposed yeah uh so yeah i mean the, the thing about it is the whole shark tank you know, space is uh, inundated with, I mean, I've had people tell me I need to go on Shark Tank and they're not going to take me. They don't usually do exercise stuff, movement stuff, but I think it's really hard. I mean, there are probably, depending on what you're trying to achieve, maybe easier ways to, to you know, like I, I wouldn't even think, what is the GoFundMe or something like that? You know, I mean, there are probably other ways to do it too, but I don't know, you guys, you know, it's, are you are you're uh you're not publicly traded you're a private equity company correct yeah they're private yeah yeah um any other do we get to everything i posted the contact info uh to everyone again info at magnus.ch um oh do you have an app patent on this i was in a study at vcu which involved a similar shoe with vibration do you have a patent on the yeah i mean we we have uh, several patents on the uh, this feedback technology so that's uh, how we filed patents uh, so yeah we do let's say all of the uh, let's say we have a good ip strategy so we file patents and check also if you have uh, infringing anything I, I i don't know actually we know which university is vcu what is uh Sharon? What university is VCU? Vancouver. It's no, it's um, Virginia um, Commonwealth University. It's in Richmond. Oh, uh, Virginia. Okay. For the last two years, on they, they had put a vibration in my. They they test with people's regular shoes. They put a vibration in your foot, in your shoe. Yes. Well, I think probably. Yeah. I think I know the, I, I remember seeing some papers, it, I, I guess it's related to that, but it's a little bit uh, different thing, but yeah, I think it's, uh, so thanks for mentioning, I think we can definitely check again. Sorry, I don't think they've completed it as much as you have, they haven't like figured out a whole shoe thing yet, I don't think, it's just like, a, it's in the baby stages of it, I think. Uh, uh, Carol, go ahead. I see some people are asking about insurance covering part of the costs. If you work through a physical therapist, would it be covered? Not that I'm aware of at the moment. Okay. A lot of this but, stuff needs to go through, like when they when these products first roll out, they're not immediately covered by insurance. Um, that doesn't mean down the road they won't be. Uh, the, the other question I had, um, with your analysis of gait, you know, the, the, the phone records it and you can upload that to your therapist, correct? I mean, let's say it's not really in place that uh, I, I think therapists, uh, it depends a little bit on your, if you have a maybe a private uh, physical therapist, they might be interested in looking into that. Uh, it's more like we have, um, let's say we uh, sell the shoes to some clinics, they use it in a clinical setting to do standard neurological assessments. But uh, what you use at home, usually yeah, clinicians are not, let's say they, they don't have the uh, reimbursement codes, whatever. So they, they don't usually look into this data uh, collected at home. Again, there might be exceptions if it's a private one, but normally the, the insurances are, I think, not covering it. So we are not yet there to uh, send this data and then they look at it. It's more that, yeah, they do. I mean, I think most of you are familiar with also the tests like time up and go. Uh, 10 meter walk test, six minute walk yeah. test, these kind of things you can also perform. So 
these you don't find it in the uh, let's say version for uh, uh, patients but th th there is like another version that is used at clinics and then there they really use these standard tests uh, then they, they can really look into details of your data so they are not just like observing or uh, checking the time they get a full report on all the parameters do so you do you do you have some of those standardized tests on the application so they can do the sit up stand up and go and all those not, not for the patient version but they have a record mode so they can still do it so if they know what they are recording they can always repeat the same thing and then do a little bit like a comparison looking at those kind of how they did it but yeah they are more the let's say meant for the clinician so um the the patient version is a bit like simple okay and you had said that they can use it for neurological assessment what what do they do what is that how do they assess neurological with this I mean, it also not just restricted to Parkinson's disease. I think most of the geriatric patients or uh, neurological kind of, um, let's say, uh, doctors, neurologists, they like to uh, see, I mean, typically they observe you, right? So they make you walk and then they observe you. Uh, so this is a bit like we digitalize that. So they do these tests and then they collect the data and they like to do, you know, when you first go see them, maybe they make like a baseline measurement and they after they start a new medication or uh, do something, then they repeat exactly the same test and they see kind of okay what changed in the uh, meantime and uh, so that's kind of what they do and they, 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 there's also this standardized test so that, that they perform through uh, let's say with the application they have in the clinic uh, that's what I mean with the, those things so okay. this is also well accepted let's say everyone is doing some certain tests so we also you can do the same with our and we give a little bit more data compared to uh, let's say um, subjective uh, observation okay uh could could the shoe help with spinal stenosis i mean uh, i don't i think we never had a patient with uh no, by, that, by that i mean if you're walking correctly it may help your muscles to you know tighten your muscles to hold your spine in in place more it would be like an exercise if you're walking properly. So, sir, I would just toss out certainly any type of corrective exercise that would improve gait might, you know, stenosis is, you know, a narrowing of the spine. I don't know that it's going to reverse that, but any type of exercise that corrects proper movement, um, I would think would be helpful. But I, I'm making the claim that it would help with spinal stenosis. Um, and I'd leave that to them. But, uh, okay. you know, I think in the world of like corrective exercise, uh, this really, I think, fits very well. It's difficult to say. I think like it helps with a certain condition, but it, you, you get the feedback. And if you use it maybe to, let's say, correct yourself, you can, let's say, benefit from it. But I think <sighs> we, we are not really able to say, okay, it really helps with one condition. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it can maybe use certain modes to uh exercise better improve some of the uh, parameters uh yeah okay all right um well um i'll toss it out here to the gang uh tough gang you guys got some good questions um and uh also you know i don't know if chinook or uh Olga, if you have questions for our our group here i'll i'll open that up to you if you have any questions for our community um feel free to ask everybody here is really um open most open and, and know that they don't need to ch chime in so don't feel you know afraid to ask a question if they don't feel like answering they won't um okay did, i'll ask a question did you all enjoy the presentation <laughs> <Very interesting. laughs> okay I was, I was actually about to ask that was this kind of interesting <laughs> or uh, yeah we have the, yeah, we are the here for once, and I think compared to the other sessions, is was this something like uh, over average for you? Something interesting, something to learn, something interesting to look at. Anybody? Yeah. Have a thumbs up. Larry's got a thumbs. Up. Yeah, and uh, as this was very well received. Uh, thank you so much. Um, and for those of you in LA, we're going to be. This is Smart XPD, but I'm also, as you know, involved with PCLA, and we are partnering up um, with uh, these folks here, and they'll have the shoes at the uh, at the 5K. So if you want to come and join us, I'll be there. It'd be fun to see everybody. 
um, and they'll be there to try it. So, all right. Yeah. All right. See you all next week. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, everybody. Email me Thanks. if you have questions. Uh, email me, um, or uh, if there are questions specific to their shoe, email them. And if you email me, I'll pass it on to them. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Over back in Chinook. <laughs>